Okay everyone, so let's give Bandit level 4 to level 5 a go. And the level goal is that the password for the next level is stored in the only human readable file in the in here directory. Tip, if your terminal is messed up, try the reset command. So the only human readable file. So that's interesting, um, but I don't think we need to think about that just yet. Let's first get to the in here directory and see what we've got there. So if we ls and cd into in here. So now we're in the directory, we do ls and we see that there's several files in here. Um, so now we can talk about this human readable thing. If we look at the, the file type of the file 00 and we have to do our little trick if you remember um, with the dot and the dash so that it interprets the um, the dash correctly you can see that we have data. So whereas previously that said ASCII text, uh, which, okay, is quite interesting. What does that mean? So let's see if we can put the um, output of that file to our display. Right, and so that's, that's a mess, and it's sort of messed up our shell prompt here, and it just all looks a bit strange. The reason it's messed up our shell prompt is because that file didn't end with a new line, so it didn't. So the uh, the shell didn't know to put put a new line there. So we can just enter out, and that will sort that out for us. Now this is what it means by non-human readable um, information, I guess. It's this is the binary digits that make up this file. You know, when we print them to the screen, that's interpreting the ones and zeros as text. Um, and so if there's ones and zeros that correspond to certain letters, it will print them. Um, and if, it, if there's ones and zeros uh, bytes that don't correspond to letters, it's going to say, well, what the heck letter is this? Um, I have no idea. And it will print this weird box with a question mark. So although this could be like, anything you know if it was a picture if you try to cat a picture file you would get lots and lots of random letters and lots of these question marks and stuff and it's not because the picture has letters and these things in it it's just that when interpreting the the, the bytes of data as text this is what they represent obviously we shouldn't it's silly of us to interpret the um, the data of a picture as text because it's not text we would have to interpret it as a picture um, and use the values to specify the amount of red, green and uh, yellow in a um, red, green and blue, sorry, <laughs> red, green and blue in a, in, in a pixel instead and we'd get the desired output, right? So that's why it's non-human readable. So we need to find a file that is human readable. Uh, we're going to probably say ASCII text, right? The file one of these files is going to be ASCII text and that's going to be the one that contains the password. So we need to try and figure out a way to, to, to look at all the different file types of these which we could do. We could do easily by just doing file of this, file of this, file of this and seeing if we can find one that says ASCII text. We could concatenate them all together, the outputs, and see that there'd be a string of human readable text and that might be the password. But if we tried that, let's just do it with two of them. The problem we have there is that we don't know where this first string ends and the second file begins. And so when it comes to extracting the correct data, it might be quite tricky. So I think the better approach is probably to try and see which one is ASCII text. Um, so we're going to use the file command. now. We don't really want to use the file command on, on all of these separately because that's a chore and whenever we can we should try and optimize uh, and cut corners in some way. It's just a bit smarter, it saves time and we have all the tools necessary to do that so where we can we should try to, right? Now the way we're going to do that is with something called a wildcard. So I'm going to start putting this, the file name in. What's interesting about these files is that they all start with the same um, dash file zero and then followed by another digit afterwards, right? 
So what we can do is use a star wildcard or an asterisk. Now what that means is when you put an asterisk in like this, it's going to do the file command on every file that fits this pattern. Okay, so what, what's going to happen is if the file begins like this and then has any ending, that's what the star means, anything basically, it's like a, a just anything, then it will fit this pattern and it will the file command will be um, executed on that particular file. So, in this instance, this pattern is going to fit every single one of these files, right? Because they all begin with dash file. So when we do this file on this, it's going to do file of that, then 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 file of that, and so on. Um, it doesn't. We don't have to write the whole bit that's in common for each of them. Like for instance, this would work as well, as would this. But the moment you do this, it's not going to work anymore, right? It will just do the that particular file. Um, so I hope that makes sense. So, and you can see the power of this, right? Because we've just by doing this and hitting enter, we've we've done several things in a very short syntax, and that's like the power of the command line, right? Is that we can, with a little bit of skill, we can sort of perform quite co uh, complex commands very, very easily. And as you can see, the results of that, we have a file seven, and it's ASCII text. So that's exactly what we were hoping to see, and then we can cat file 7, which is our password. So I hope that makes sense, I hope um, I didn't butcher anything there, but I think I think that went okay. And yeah, brilliant. So that's the password for the next one, and I'll see you there.